Hi, my name is Sam Led, and welcome to The Fearless Now. This is for you, you, and you in the nosebleed seats. If you're looking for an easier way to approach anxiety, stress, and unhealthy habits from the inside out, there's no techniques and no strategies. So sit back, relax, and let me be your peace of mind Uber driver here on The Fearless Now. Welcome to The Fearless Now podcast. My name is Sam Led. I'm a transformational coach, and this is episode number 19. How to tap into that inner wisdom that we all have on tap, on offer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. And it's not what you think. There are no techniques or procedures or you don't have to listen to fancy music or, I mean, it would help if that's what works for you. You don't have to put on binaural beats or put on sophagio frequencies. I mean, if that's what you like, if that's helpful to you, then great. But It's way beyond that because once we know that it's our built-in system, that it's part of the grand design of who we are, not our thinking, not our supercomputer, which is all part of the same piece, but it's a piece that is below all that, that is divine and within all of you. As woo-woo and as esoteric as that sounds, it's actually a spiritual truth that you have an inner GPS, inner wisdom that, if you listen to it, will show you left or right, up or down, and what your next step is along your life path. And I kind of didn't believe in all that. And I thought that all my wisdom and everything that I have to tap into is all up in my brain, all up in my supercomputer, all in that hard drive we call the brain that's storing stuff and analyzing stuff, categorizing stuff, and when I realized there's so much beyond all that stuff that we have to tap into, that all the great sages, and I've mentioned this before, I'm going to mention it again, all the great prophets, you name your favorite prophet, your favorite holy person, leader, spiritual guru, from Jesus to Buddha to Moses, they all knew something that we know every day and see every day, but we don't pay attention to it enough. It's called inner wisdom. And those of you that do tap into it have made some really great decisions in your life, have taken on that spiritual walk within yourself and fell in love with that person or chose the right job for you or bought the house that worked for you or moved to that wonderful town or or city. And it's not in the anxiety. It's not in the constant machinery of thought and thinking that's just the cog and wheel going all around and around and around. It's not any of that. My mother, bless her heart, she always had words of wisdom for me, my sister, and for her friends. And they were always spot on most of the time. They were always really helpful. And I always asked, I would ask her, so where would you get these words of wisdom from? And some of them were puns and anecdotes and but they always came across as divinely sent. Now, obviously, I have some bias. It's my mother, and of course, I love her more than anything, but I saw that her words of wisdom hit home to her friends, to the people she worked with, to my dad. And when my dad would listen and really hear her words of wisdom, it would improve things in his work, make his life easier. My mother, she knows how to tap into her inner wisdom. And there's nothing to know how to do. It's just really listening and getting quiet. And I wanted to share with you a brief story about another example of tapping into inner wisdom and what happens when we get lost in the busyness of our monkey mind and old traumas and old behaviors that very innocently our mind is convincing us is truth. It doesn't know better. In fact, it doesn't know. It's replaying a loop that's stored in the memory banks in the hard drive. And I had a client five or six years ago that came in with some chronic pain and wanted to move through some some old stagnant energy. I did, I still do, energy healing and light therapy that would help move through and process old stagnant energy that's stuck in the pain body. We call it the pain body to move it through. And she also just wanted to get some coaching too, just to talk it out. Been to therapists, been to chiropractors, physical therapists, psychotherapists, you name it. And she still came back to the same issue of chronic pain and anxiety. 
And my client was convinced that the trauma, the storage trauma came from living with a decades living with a an abusive mom, abusive mother, that there was she couldn't let go of was the trauma subconsciously, perhaps, that it was playing her over and over again in her mind, in her brain. Now, there's no denial that her mother may have been emotionally abusive. There's no denial that she had trauma that that happened 40 years ago. When she came in for her first session, she told her story. And she went on and on about her story, about her her experience and the abuse. And there's no condoning abuse, and it's never okay to be the to be the recipient of any kind of abuse. There is no excuse for any kind of emotional physical abuse. It doesn't matter what happened and what you did. But when that abuse carries on decades later, 40 years later, and it's disrupting your day-to-day life. And when you see and you think these thoughts over and over again, and then you link it to chronic pain, and specialists are telling you that it's because of stress and anxiety, and it's causing chronic pain, and it's because of this, this, and this, you start believing it. It becomes habituated into the system. It becomes conditioned into the thinking, and your brain is just a sponge soaking up data and then storing it in the memory banks. So I asked my client after she went through her story about what happened to her and what she's working with and what she's dealing with, I asked her, what is true? What is true in that and what you're saying? That the thoughts that she's having about a a terrible trauma that happened to her decades ago, 40 plus years ago, is actually doing physical harm to her body. And that her thoughts, that she believes that her thoughts are actually harming her. And again, I'm, I'm not condoning trauma. Most people will agree that abuse and trauma is not good. But my client's brain, like all of our brains, innocently is reacting like any brain would. But the memory in itself is just thought. And even if we did have that trauma that is affecting our day-to-day lives 40 plus years later, causing chronic pain, causing physical manifestation, we would realize though that It may not be possible that what is true is it that we have these thoughts all day long, we have this anxiety all day long. That's 100% false. We don't have the memory of a trauma 40 years ago or plus every hour of the day. There are many times during the day when we are calm that we're not caught up in our heads, that we are in the present moment naturally many, many times a day if we pay attention to it. But we are conditioned to believe the noise in our heads is more powerful and is truth than the quiet beneath the noise. That we are conditioned to believe that it's not okay to be uncomfortable in the anxiety when our thinking goes sideways. That we can still operate throughout the day with anxiety. That when we attribute our anxiety and we really put so much focus on Those thoughts, of course, it's going to cause pain, physical pain. Of course, it's going to not feel good because we're just so focused on it. That's just how the body works on a mechanical level. On a spiritual level, there's no such thing as pain or anxiety or overthinking. But when we put so much emphasis and we are overthinking our thinking and then we're caught up in anxiety and hopelessness and all that heavy stuff, the brain is producing noradrenaline. And over time, that noradrenaline and those stress hormones could cause breakdown in the body, can cause chronic pain, of course. But once we see that the memory of the trauma is a thought that doesn't exist, that it's made up, then things start becoming questionable. Things start becoming, hmm, not as they seem. So I asked my client to question the noise, to see, despite how terrible it was 40 years ago, to to live in a household with someone who was physically and emotionally abusive, to question and to see how ridiculous the noise is. Now, again, I'm not condoning emotional, physical abuse, but 40 plus years later, and someone is still suffering from it, you got to question where it's coming from. And the answer is thought that's made up in the moment and how the brain tries to convince us to pay attention to it, that there's something to be concerned about it. And innocently, God bless our brains, our supercomputers, the brain thinks that by recycling that story, it will somehow keep us safe out of harm's way. 
And it's like me when I shared my story about my fear of, of flying. And sometimes I'm really scared. Sometimes I'm really anxious. And other times I'm having the best trip of my life that I'm loving being on the plane, going super fast, relaxing in my seat, sipping a cold drink and reading a book in peace on at 36,000 feet. It's incredible. And in other times, I'm really feeling my anxiety. But once we see that that's okay and it's all part of the human design, that the brain's doing what's going to do anyways, that there's really nothing to, to fix within that and that it will self-correct and I won't be anxious all the time and to sit in our anxiety, that it's okay to be anxious, that it's okay to, to have these thoughts. And when we see that it's okay, we don't hyper-focus on it so much. Now, getting back to my client, you know, her story was the story being recycled over and over again telling yourself about what happened 40 years ago. But it was more than that. It wasn't just a horrible story about emotional and physical abuse. It was her conditioned thinking and the story she was telling herself on auto repeat on a daily basis that has unfortunately disrupted a lot of pieces of her life, a lot of areas of her life, her relationships, her, her work life, her finances. But when we see it's just thought, that we can eject that floppy disk program, that anxiety, that trauma program from our brain's hard drive as quickly as it was saved on that hard drive 40 plus years ago. If we see that we're one thought away from peace, from calm, from just feeling good for no damn reason. It's interesting because before, you know, when I was looking for answers and help with my ADD, just like this client was looking for answers and help remedy and find solutions to her chronic pain and her anxiety. Part of the difficulty in letting go of those thoughts and that thought program is because we have so much time and money invested in our problems. We have so much investment in it that it's really hard to let it go. We become addicted to treating it very innocently. And that's another thought program that we can eject at any time. And as the brilliant Scottish mystic Sid Banks once said, that we are just one thought away from mental health. We are just one thought away from clarity of mind. That we do have inner wisdom within us. We do have this inner guidance system beneath our thinking that is ushering along, us along the river of life if we pay attention to it more. But it's the judgment and criticism and labels that we apply to inner wisdom that gets us caught up in another thought program. I mean, we create our own thought programs amidst other thought programs. It becomes a Leviathan. So I, I asked my client, getting back to my client, I asked her to challenge the belief that she could not let go of her thinking about the memories and thinking around the trauma. And I asked her, I said, when those memories come up, when the anxiety around that stuff comes up during your day, could you just be curious about it? Is it always popping up? That How is that making any sense on any level, whether a brain level or on a spiritual level? Maybe it's not real. And if it, when it does pop up, you could just question it. You could say, huh, I'm having anx anxious thoughts or I'm having you know, sadness and hopelessness around something that happened 40 years ago. Maybe it's not real. Hmm, I'm having those thoughts again. Hmm. And the more we question it, the more we get curious about how our brain's working over time, the better able we can to eject those thought programs that don't serve our greater purpose. Now, they may never go away. In fact, a lot of the times it doesn't go away, but it becomes not as loud. It becomes less defined. Instead of it being right in front of you, it's in the background whispering. It's kind of that great, the great metaphor is, is there was that movie, a brilliant mind with that, I forgot his name, about that brilliant scientist. He was, I think, a mathematician that was really into finite math. And he had, uh, despite him winning the Nobel Prize in mathematics, he had schizophrenia. And for decades, he suffered, destroyed his relationships and disrupted his work life, made life miserable for him. And then one day, he saw it for what it was. The characters in his head, the delusions he saw were really made up by his brain, just caught up in a program, a dysfunctional program, and he focused on it less. They were still there, but he made peace with it. And that's what my client did. My client 
started to see, started to see more, that there has to be something more than the ongoing story your brain is creating for you, making up for you. You know, our mind is kind of like, do you remember Cliff's Notes? Well, I'm a Gen Xer and growing up, we used Cliff Notes. Instead of reading the, the novel, we would cheat. Cliff's Notes was this yellow and black thin booklet that would basically summarize the characters and the plot of the story for you. And sometimes they were spot on. And sometimes Cliff's Notes went in directions that were very noticeable uh, to the uh, teacher or instructor. They, they would pick up very quickly that you didn't read the book that you're reading the Cliff's Notes. And just like Cliff's Notes, our brain does its best to summarize what's going on in our outside world. Yet, just like Cliff's Notes, it's not correct or accurate a lot of the time. It's a narrative. It's always looking for reasons to judge, compare, and offer future guesstimations we actually believe is truth. But there's nothing wrong with that. The brain's doing what it knows how to do. It's just bouncing around, analyzing stuff, comparing stuff, splicing and dicing stuff, categorizing stuff. But it's not truth. It is a perception of the truth made up in real time. Realizing that we have 60,000 thoughts a day, a good 90 plus percent of that is noise. That's a lot of noise. That's a lot of stuff going on in your brain. And it gets all of us sped up sometimes. And for those of us that have really active, noisy brains, we get sped up and anxious a lot. But once we realize that you're not going to quiet the brain down by trying to fix what's not broken, that it's just a natural design of who you are, that the whole enchilada is your noisy brain and the common piece under that noisy brain. That if you stop beating yourself up for your noisy brain and when the noise gets really loud, you just get curious about it and you sit with it and you remind yourself that the noise is going to calm down if I just sit with it, that I'm not the administrator of my noise, that it's just thought energy moving through, that there's so much more beyond our thinking that gets us along in life if we listen to it more. I hope this has been helpful. I love doing this podcast. For you, you and you in the nosebleed seats, it's such an honor and a privilege to be here for all of you guys. This podcast is made possible by all of you, you, you and you in the nosebleed seats. Please like and subscribe today and comment. And if you tell your friends, they'll tell their friends at someone who, who needs to hear this and then they'll tell their friends and then they'll tell their friends and et cetera and et cetera. So please like, comment and subscribe this podcast and I will... Uh, Love just continuing to provide fresh new content for you guys. I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you again for episode number 20 of the Fearless Now podcast.